Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rob. Let's go ahead and make sure you all can hear me. If you'd please go ahead and type the number one in the questions box, let me know that you can. I would greatly appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much. Hey, Amelia, I don't know. Let me see. It was giving me a hard time giving me the screen here. Oh, there we go. Got it. Fantastic. Hope you all having a great day. What a what a difference a couple of days can make. Huh? A weekend and off you go. Oh no, we definitely have screen share. It's just a, uh, a fight for some reason to get it to work. Give me a second. Let's try that again. See if I can't get it to work this time. Ah, okay. There we go. All should be good. Excellent. Excellent. So how has the day been so far? Talk to me about some trades, folks. How have you been doing? It's been a great day. Magic carpet ride. Trying to get all pieces to the puzzle working together. Right, there we go. You should see my camera now. Remember, my video camera is here. My microphone is here and the questions are here. So here, okay. Make sure you can see my hands. Up on a different monitor. So I'm not always gonna be looking at this particular monitor. There you go. <clears throat> all right, no takers on trades, huh? Well, hmm. Shut that other computer's volume down. All right. Well, let's go ahead and jump in and type them in as you get them. I know Amelia crushed it this morning. Ed said, good trades up to $235. There you go. All right, Ed. Excellent. Excellent, my friend. On the YM. Very nice. All right. Kevin said, missed some this morning, but I'm ready for the next one. Yeah, I understand. Well, you know, and that's best thing not to do is not trade then, right? If you got all this stuff going on, you know, medical things happening and, and just stuff, um, I get it, right? Um, you just, you do what you can. Yeah, Trip, Trip uh, chimed in there with an amen. So folks, that's one of the biggest things you could do for yourself is it's not just a matter of finding good trades, it's finding the best times not to trade. And if you're not in a good headspace, if you're not in a good mindset, if things are not happening the way you want them to, they're messing with your head a little bit, walk away, don't trade right now. That will be the absolute best thing that you could possibly do is don't trade. Sometimes the best trade is no trade at all. Um, but Will said, I'm here though, right? Prayers, please. Absolutely, Well, your, your family is in our prayers without a doubt. Um, Tom said, um, Sat out this morning, made 4K on paper Thursday and Friday last week. There you go. There were some good days. There were some really good days. Last week actually produced our largest week ever. And that's interesting since two weeks before that was our largest week ever. So um, we've, uh, yeah, we've done extremely well. We pretty much hit our year goal already in September for uh, power option plays. So I'm impressed with what we've been able to do there. So market's been generous to us. We'll talk a little bit about what's going on in a minute there with it. We've got trading you coming up on September 15th, uh, Mastermind Group Live, which is going to be this Friday and Saturday online, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Monster Market Movers on the 22nd. And then the Mastermind Group Online uh, is next one is the 29th. Uh, some of you have had expressed an interest in the Mastermind Group. It is open now. Um, and I will tell you that um, if you do have an interest, you really want to reach out to Amelia sooner rather than later uh, and for that. So you can always drop, so Tom said interested, you can always drop a comment in here about, uh, you know, just MMG interested, call me on MMG, email, whatever. Um, folks, we're there. We're there. We have seen, not only have we seen amazing things happen in there, but the new format of what we're laying out there you basically will have access to us once a week 
uh, to help train you in the mastermind group is going to be phenomenal. Uh, we're going to see some name changes. The Mastermind Group, which was called online, is just going to be called Mastermind Group. The Mastermind Group 2020, which is our live Mastermind Group, is going to shift over now to Inner Circle. Uh, you've got Power Hour each and every Monday. Last week, we didn't do it because holiday, baby. We all need a day off. And then Brandon's got top three trading strategies coming up this week. Uh, I did see uh, about 100 people over this weekend come through an email that they were that had registered for. Actually, that was on Sunday. When I sat down yesterday, there were about 100 people had registered. I hadn't checked it since, but uh, we're getting them near capacity in that room again. So make sure that you register and get there early. Right, Power Option Plays, Cover Calls for and E-Mini Think Tank this week are all on schedule for regular times. Uh, no, no deviation from it. Uh, here's our follow-us page. A lot of brand new people in here that I don't recognize names or newer names I see only once in a while um, recently. Make sure that you're following along with us. Folks, help us out. I'm, I'm trying to push up to that 400 number on YouTube. We're getting massive views. People staying for a long time on our views. We're getting you know more than three quarters of the video watched on average, which is great for YouTube. How many people have a 10 second attention span and walk away, right? Uh, and then Facebook, Twitter, doesn't matter. Folks, we put stuff out every single day. Make sure you're checking it out. And it's time. So let's see. Daniel said, um, going great with paper trades. Um, uh, uh, let's see, Amelia, can you please help Daniel out there? Check his uh, comment. We'll get that taken care of for you, Daniel. Yep, Sean said we're five people away on YouTube to hitting 400. Absolutely. It's great to see the team jumping in here and, and checking it out and watching. And, you know, trade, Sean's got his trading setup going there, guys. And he's got his work computer and his four trading computers happening, you know, his monitors uh, for his trading system. So let's talk about the markets along with the Fed first. So, <clears throat> okay. So I'm at Forex Factory. I have shifted only over to US positions. I normally look at everything, but I just shifted over to the US. And here it is, right? So today, all yellow, nothing really crazy important for today. Um, actually, this is tomorrow. There's nothing today. For tomorrow, nothing crazy. Wednesday, we've got core retail sales, which is red. Retail sales, which is orange, same report. I don't care about the business inventories or the housing markets. Crude inventory is orange. Uh, I still believe that should be red, especially if you're in Brandon's um, E-minis, folks. He trades this every week. Crude and gas. It's like clockwork. Every Wednesday, every Thursday. And then we have on Wednesday, the Fed with their economic projections, their FOMC statement, the Fed funds rate, and then the Fed, the FOMC, which is the Fed press conference. Uh, economic projections what do they see happening out there where's the economy going what do they see coming down the pike is it a recession it, what is it right uh do we need an intercession what, what's happening there uh the fed's going to make a statement then the fed funds rate are they going to change rates they really can't lower them anymore and they're certainly not in a position that they can raise it without a doubt they cannot raise rates at this point right uh then a press conference they'll be holding at that point at 2 30. so you will find on wednesday <clears throat> well, you guys tell me, um, give me, we're going to use three numbers in here, one, two, or three, all right? One, if you think the volume on Wednesday before the Fed is going to be light, will be one, two will be average, three would be high. Are we going to see light volume? Normally, light volume, average volume, or high volume, one, two, three, light is one, average two, uh, heavy is three. All right, so we've got a, a myriad of, of numbers coming through in there. All we got ones, twos, and threes. Some are putting pluses in there. Uh, Brendan said, "Don't know." That's like trying to predict the market. Well, not not really, Brendan. So, you know, watching and waiting, Charles. There you go. There you go. So here's the thing: volume normally on days when the Fed announced are low, up to the point of the Fed announcement because the uncertainty of what's happening in the market. That doesn't mean there's not price movement. 
that just means on the actual volume, how many shares are traded on the market, the S&P, are actually happening now. Stocks are lighter, the markets are lighter, and that's caution. People just saying, wait, I'm going to wait. Now that's professionals. You still get a lot of amateurs jumping in because they don't know any different do or don't do in there. So if the Fed comes out with economic projections that are bad and you bought calls that morning, you're gonna get crushed. You will have your head handed to you. Depending on, on where the market is viewing this report that's coming out, um, if it's overvaluing the, the information, meaning they think that this could be a potentially a big move, you would see or may see on your positions the SPY, certainly <coughs> me, certainly on the individual stocks, you'll see a widening of bid-ask spread. That's uncertainty. Because if the market maker is wrong, you at least paid a little bit more to get in that trade, and they can offset their risk a little bit with that. When it comes down to the actual Fed funds rate, it's orange because we don't really expect to see anything taking place. So the volume normally tends to be lighter up to that point when the announcement comes out. You can see the whole day's volume come up by the by the time two o'clock to four o'clock or two thirty to four in this case because of the press conference. By the time that's over and done, you can see day's volume look normal. But if you look back, you'll see you know here was yesterday, here's today, and it kind of stays there. And then two o'clock comes and boom, we get a, a spike up in volume, which puts us at that normal volume. Uh, for the, the previous day or days, right? The normal volume we would see on there. Uh, let's see. Okay, got it. There was just, some people were just typing in what they thought it was in words instead of numbers, which is fine. <clears throat> I just try to make it easy for you so you don't have to type anything other than numbers. Very quick and easy. So as far as Fed, I will be backing off a little bit in the morning. I'll still do some day trades. Nothing that I plan on holding. I might do day trades. Nothing that I plan on holding over into the um the announcement excuse me but if i already am in positions like i entered a new diagonal this morning just one uh it, it right out of the box it did exactly what i wanted it to so i took that trade i'll check some more of them once we're done here today and see what's going on but i wound up with one new trade i'm in that trade i don't i'm not getting out before the announcement comes out i really don't see a need for it Outside of the Fed and retail sales, we don't have anything on this page that's red. So we have no major announcements coming out over the next week or so um, at all for the marketplace. All right. So that's from the Fed standpoint. From a standpoint of the markets themselves, let's go. Well, let's see. Let's just stay here for a second. The S&P 500 is up 56, almost 57. The Nasdaq's up 247, and the Dow is up 376. Amazing, amazing on how much Nasdaq is moving, how much um, effect it's having on overall markets out there. So if we go and look over at uh, Trade Nav, let's make sure. Yep, I've got it up there. Okay. Um, I always like to make sure that I have my symbol grid of all symbols here. So this way the symbol can pop up. I can see what my fibbit is and I can always go ahead and make adjustments if need be, uh, widen this out to see other data points. So if we look right now where the S&P is, we ran into a blue zone, right? Now we call a blue zone a healthy zone, right? But now that healthy zone is attacking it from the right angle. Right now, we, we're closer to being in a bullish position than we are bearish, right? From a standpoint of ADX, the ADX is still well above the 25. The DMI plus and minus, we're at 24.37 for the plus and 25.67 for the minus. But we have been five days now, if you count today, we've been five days in a sideways pattern, right? Just kind of stuck inside of this realm in here. The goal is to break the 3400, 3411 to start getting bullish positions back. And for the S&P, that also means that the eight must cross back above the 21. We move above the 3411. I think that happens fairly easily uh, for us. <clears throat> right? So let's see. Uh, I don't know. Trip, did it move? Hmm. 
Yeah, I don't know why. I mean, I didn't put it back. It's a very valid point. Chip saying we redrew it. I'm not, I don't pay attention to the numbers. Once they're drawn, they're drawn. Uh, we redrew it in pop. I don't know why. Hmm. I don't know why we it uh, trade nav put it back, but I certainly wouldn't delete. Well, let me not do that yet. I wouldn't delete it out, but that's okay. We're here. Let's go fix it. But good catch, Trip. So based on that, let me see. Let me get rid of this blue zone. Because we really don't need it. Another one here. Oh, wrong line. That was 100 point level we got rid of. So let's do this. Let's move that out of the way. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this and let's put this back at 3,300. Okay, let's go over to template number one where we have no fibs on there. We've got a nice bottoming pattern in here. We move up, we go sideways, we move up and we get a clear pattern down. So I probably need to check all of the recent fib changes we did, Trip, just to make sure that it didn't change it on that as well. But again, good catch. So let's go back to standard zoom here. Let's pull that out. And what are we looking at? 119, we'll call it 120, the easy math in my head. 3,500, 3,600. We don't need a fibbit there. 36 to 37, we don't need any fibbits. Okay, so we're good on fit without fibbits in place. All right, perfect. So let me bring it back in. All right, we're still bumping our head and we still have a blue zone in there. All right, Trip. I mean, we're, I'm going to leave it for now. I don't. I just want to go check each of them, but it looks like that might be the lower one. I'm not sure, but I'll, I'll check it out. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, freak me out. <laughs> I get it. Uh, Jim said, Bones Man squeeze big time right now, 10 and 20. Yeah, I missed when you put that in, Jim. That was five minutes ago uh, on SPY. So check it out, guys. One of the greatest things about being here is people calling this type of stuff out. So... We definitely have a blue zone right in here. All right, we and today we pressed up to it now. If you look, let me stretch it out the opposite direction. You can see we we gapped up from where we were. We ran right now. We're above the thirty three ninety four. Uh, we're actually right at that thirty four hundred, and then our high today was 3402.93 and we're looking at uh, see it's hard to see because these are so tight it's hard to get it accurate there we go all right so now we're perfect at 3400 right so great blue zone so it's an area of strength yeah it's exactly brendan when the chart is that small i can't see it you know when it's like this it's almost impossible four dollars off on a $3,400 price point, not that hard to do, right? Actually fairly easy to miss by that much. So overall, I'm liking where it is. If we go and look at the VIX, right? VIX has been coming down. Even when the markets were going down, the VIX had still been dropping a bit in there, which was great. We're back down again today. We're under that 2620 level. In there again, I don't care about moving averages here. We're under the 26.20. Our next target is at 21.45. But my guess is we're going to hesitate a little bit somewhere, whether it be that 25, uh, 23.54 rather, which is what we did the last time. But somewhere in here, we're going to slow it down a little bit, I would guess. Um, for sure. All right. Let me just write this number down here. All right. So 
Overall market, good. Overall VIX, good, right? I'm comfortable with it. I like that the VIX has lower tops right here. Certainly would like to see lower bottoms, but look at how long it took us to get from this 2634 down to this 2145 level. It was quite a bit. So Jim said, remind me again what the orange and yellow vertical lines are for. They are for power option plays only, Jim. The yellow line helps us to understand if earnings show up before the yellow line, right, between today's price and the yellow, that yellow line that says don't do a trade because earnings are too close. And when I say a trade, a directional trade. So uh, day trade, do them all day long. I'm, I love doing them on those candidates, right? The orange bar just shows where the last power option place update was done. So when we're looking at that saying, okay, that's where we were, we were in a trade, we got in here, and now we're sitting here, right? On that day, we know today where we were, right? As far as when we made the call the last time. No, 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 no earnings on VIX, Jim. I'm just using the yellow and orange bar. That, those bars show up on every chart. They're on every chart for the exact same date. You can highlight things on your chart. You can highlight, you can use these types of bars, Jim, for uh, things such as expiration Fridays. You can put every Friday on there so a bar shows up every single Friday the market's open. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rick said those lines are a constant reminder for Rick to get a video out. Okay. Uh, Rick does uh, our tech behind the trader, tech behind the trade for YouTube um, stuff. So everything trade navigator, trade station. Uh, Rick works on that type of stuff for us. Right. Like the horizontal 100 numbers. Exactly, Jim. They, they have a purpose and a reason behind what we do, but those 100 point levels are critical. So on Apple, we don't have one right now, right? Why? Because Apple was a much higher stock, right? So let's snap one in. Well, I don't want to duplicate it. Let's go change the price line and the structure of the line. So it becomes 100. I make it a dash dot and I make it this pinkish ish type color in there. Right. So it kind of fades a little more into the background. So we've got that in there. We're, in, we're not anywhere near it at this point. You can see where the split was. We split, we ran up and, you know, the, folks, that was just it. I did this on a video on YouTube and talked about on the YouTube video about the splits for Tesla and Apple is what it was. And you can see when we split, that's where the split came in. We gapped up the open. Right. And then the next day we gapped up and failed and it's been down ever since, right? Stocks don't tend to run normally after a stock split. Now, there are companies that could have other news out there like a Tesla, right? They could have had other news that could potentially drive that position. But look at Tesla. That was the split date, right? Look what happened. We failed right from there. Uh, I'm not saying that we're not going back up. What I'm saying is, Stocks tend to come down after they split. They tend to play this yuck game of no real direction, slight drift down, slight drift up, you know, very much meandering around for a little while before they start to recover. And actually, in the next uh, trading you that I am teaching, that is my topic. We didn't get to it last month. We got so many questions. Uh, we didn't get to the topic of the month this month, uh, the last one I did. So this month coming up, the, the first one that I'm teaching is on stock splits. And there's five phases of stock splits. We'll be going over those five phases. Okay, beautiful. So you got, you've got the markets, you've got the Fed, you've got the VIX. I don't expect we'll see much out of the Fed as far as changes, right? Recession, depression, again, do we need an intercession? Um, I'm not, I'm not too concerned that we're going to see anything crazy happening there. It's an election year. The Fed normally tends to stay away from raising rates to not try to influence the, the overall market. But you've got to be concerned with some of what they say. And the, what they say could be, hey, we're expecting the economy to do really poorly. Um, how about the costs? Has anybody besides me noticed how expensive things have become? 
And I mean everything things have become. Food, shipping, services. The place I go for my haircut. The guy I go for my haircut went out of business with COVID. So there's a local barber shop. It's kind of the, the spiral barber pole outside. You know, there's 14 guys are working in there cutting men's hair. Uh, I went to one of those places. They normally charge $17. They raised their price to 20 right? That's a 16% increase in cost, right? Everything has got ridiculously expensive. Now, I'm not saying businesses don't need the revenue to, to come back. Not at all, right? You've got other businesses like the airlines who have gone the other direction and are lowering prices because they can't get enough people. <clears throat> they can't sustain. By the way, did you guys see the announcement from Delta today? Uh, so lots of yeses, lots of ones, 10-4. Amazon Prime is still free shipping. But what changed on Amazon Prime, Will? What changed about Amazon Prime? It's no longer Prime, right? Amazon Prime, five days. But five days? What happened to two? And then after the five days, I get, oh, sorry, your product is still coming, but it's delayed. I've had more stuff lost in shipping lately and more stuff damaged in shipping. We bought a brand new desk. The desk top and the desk back of cracked in half, 71 inch desktop, cracked in half. We bought a 65 inch TV. The TV came, it looks like someone tried to fold it in half when Sean and I opened it up. And Sean jinxed it when he said, boy, I wonder if this is damaged like the desk. And we opened it up, sure was, cracked all over the place. All right? everything has become more expensive. So I'm telling you right now, that's the concern I have with the Fed. What are they going to talk about as far as what it's costing people here in the United States to live? You know, my oldest is a nurse now. Her boyfriend is a nurse, right? They're talking marriage at some point. And I had a conversation with her this weekend about now that you're working as a nurse, you're making really good money, you start to save. And this is what you do. Put this much money every two weeks away. By the time you get to here, you've got enough put aside between you and him to buy a house. And she said, I, I'm not buying a house here. I don't, I don't want to pay those prices. I'm going to go somewhere else. I want to move somewhere that's less expensive. She says, where? So we've got to see what the price they pay. You know, what are the salaries they pay nurses there versus the cost? And, and we're, so very much an economical approach to I don't want to just pay and stay in New York just because I was born in New York. Right. You guys chose to stay here. It doesn't mean we are. You know, we, her and her sister actually did. Sister's saying, uh, she won't leave daddy. That's what I tell myself, right? <laughs> she won't leave me. Um, yeah, trips. They're they're definitely looking south. They look they looked at Texas, but uh, they're both nurses. But Texas, I think they start twenty five dollars an hour for nurses. Here they started about fifty. So fifty percent price cut is tough. Um, Let's see. Yep, Jim, I'm not the one teaching the one tomorrow night for trading you. That's Tony is teaching tomorrow's. I'm doing the next one, whenever the next one is. No, 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 no. Joan, Delta. Sorry, I didn't mean Delta for uh, for traders per se, not Delta of an option. Delta, the company, made an announcement today. Um, yeah, I watched delivery people throw the packages on the porch. Oh, yeah, the, the UPS guy by us. Um, not the UPS guy, sorry, the Amazon guy by us doesn't even come to my stoop, my porch any longer. He throws the product and runs because of the, the big pit bull in the window. How much is that pit bull in the window? Um, barking, you know, paws up, you know, big dog, 75 pounds, 80 pounds, paws up on the glass as she's barking in the teeth. Arr, arr, arr. This, you know, I want to rip your face off. Look. Um, okay. So yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute, Joan, then. <clears throat> uh, let's see, Jim said, go to one of the seven states, uh, seven no, uh, no tax states. Yeah, I get it. You know, um, tell her to run from New York, but don't come to Illinois land of corruption. Yeah. You know, I hear you, Robert, but this, that stuff's happening in a lot of places right now. Jim said, I'm in Arlington, Texas. I can give them information about the DFW area. Yeah. First information is what do nurses pay? That's the big thing for them. 
is what are they paying nurses? But I, you know, Texas is one of the places they talk about. But I do appreciate it, Jim. Yeah, send me send me some details. I'll be happy to to pass it along to them. Um, did Delta, so Trip said did Delta finally lower their prices? They've been hundreds of dollars over uh, since COVID. The FAA approved drones. Oh no, sorry, two different two different points. So Delta today. They've been talking about taking federal assistance from the government. They're talking about October 1st or whatever the date is in October when they no longer have to keep all the employees on, they've already warned of layoffs. They're talking about airline layoffs could be as much as 80,000 people come October, right? Which in the grand scheme of things is not a massive number compared to the 8 million that are on unemployment now, but um, definitely a shift in where things are going. Delta was looking to borrow money because they only had, I want to say it was, 39 months of cash flow, free cash flow available, enough to pay 39 months. And, and they were going to take a $6 billion loan from the government with all kinds of co uh, covenants, right? You give us shares of stock and, and all these wonderful things. They worked something out with their, um, their frequent flyer program, and they're getting the $6, million, $6 billion, B, billion dollars from there. So they'll be able to sustain much longer than what their free cash flow is set up for right now. Um, and that, that apparently happened from, I think, American before that. Uh, I think they had announced that last week. I saw it on, on CNBC this morning at uh, Odark 7.30 a.m. or something. Um, so freeing them up a little bit, if we look at Delta, Oh, no S in Delta. I'm thinking it's Trade Navigator. If you look at Delta, there's the gap up on the announcement, and there's the move there. And of course, I did my diagonal, or bought back and rolled out my diagonal paper, of course, on Friday uh, for Delta Airlines when the stock was, uh, let's see, what did I do? I did it in the afternoon, so let's say it was 2 o'clock. Stock was at 31 and a half, and today it got up to 32 and a half, which is where it is right now, right? So look real, real quick, give me an announcement. Boom, 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 give me a number. What do you see? Or give me a, an answer rather. What do you see Delta? Tell me what you see about the chart. Talk to me. What do you notice about it? What's happening right now? Look to the right, where it is right now. What do you see? Come on, give me an answer quickly. Off a of what, Brenda? Good trip, I like that answer. All right, Jim, good. Right, Joan. All right. <clears throat> Good, PK. All right, Barry. Good. So you, you guys are on the right track. Okay. The very first thing I do, look left, look left, look left, write it down, look left, put it in a song, look left, whatever it takes for you to remember to do it, look left. Right. If we look left, here is my previous resistance of what was going on. One, two, three, four candles in that pattern, 20 minutes. We just barely closed above, and now we pull back and we get a bounce off of here. What do we have left in this candle? Uh, just about 40 seconds. I got the answer of a pressure cooker building in there. Absolutely, unequivocally, we had a pressure cooker in there. All right, uh, let's go from about here. Right, that sideways trade. So you're getting the bounce. Now, oh, Rob, can I trade this one right now? Well, maybe, but look left. <clears throat> look left, look left, look left. What do you see? Right, there's more resistance up in here, somewhere in this area here, right around this. Do we have it further back? Absolutely, we do. Right, we actually, look at that, almost to the penny, of where we hit for the high today was where we hit two days ago, so on Thursday. <clears throat> and the high of what I'm looking at right now. Trader Will said we've got a pivot at 32.51. So let's snap that in. We'll make it yellow just to make it stand out so we know it is not a trend line, horizontal line. So we're right where we are now, right? <clears throat> when you're analyzing a position, you need to know everything there is about 
what that position has done, where it's been, and the potential of where it goes next. If we go over and look at Delta Airlines here, So I have no fibs drawn here, nah, nothing crazy. Uh, there's not, not even a great place to do, possibly here, but it's okay, not great, that's for sure. So look, again, where are we? 32.58, we're bumping our head on ugly right now, right? So there's our resistance. Yeah, you know, maybe trip. The problem is we're so small of a move. You know, you've got that in there. So trip said down from February. If we draw it down from February, oh, from Feb. I'm I'm looking at March. My bad. Let me put this back for a second. You know, yes, trip. We could draw off of that that Feb there. But how big of a move is it that it doesn't actually matter any longer? And what I mean by that is. We're not getting that kind of movement to sustain that. In other words, do we need pivots inside of here now? So if we start looking here, we've got 71. Uh, let's see, uh, 3258 to 3724. So we've got $5 in here, Trip. We already need to split this, right? So we need a pivot inside of here, right? So we need a. Uh, 118 and a negative 136. Where's 118? All right. So on the existing one I drew, now we go from 32 and a half to 34 and a half, uh, 35, right? That's two and a half dollars. So we're okay here. <clears throat> if we come back here, 49.75 to 59.28, let's just go up. Well, let's just do it on the, um, let's do it on the down. So let's just put it in the 118. Right. So that gives me 18 to 23. I need to split it again, Trip. So we're we don't have a lot of validity in it any longer at this point. It, it's almost the I'd get in my car and you know, the, my physical therapy that I go to is a 40 minute drive to get to the, the office, right? All of a sudden through COVID, it's on my, my Google Maps, it says normal traffic, 20 minutes. I'm like normal traffic, yeah. Well, why? Because for two and a half months, that was normal traffic. You, you didn't have anybody taking 40 minutes to get there. Google adjusted to what was going on to the new norm. <clears throat> So Jim had said Delta Airlines chart bouncing off the five EMA today's uh, moving average, pointing more bullish. It can break the resistance and then pull back to it and then bounce off it. See, that's where I was getting at. All of you gave me the exact answer I wanted. I wasn't asking anybody to give me more. I just said, what do you see, right? And, and that's really where most of you are going and I do as well. The first thing I saw was that resistance line, right? Jim took it to the next level and said, this is what I see. I'm going to read it again. Listen to this. Daily chart bouncing off the five EMA today. Five moving average pointing more up than sideways. Looks a little bullish if it can break the resistance and then pull back to it and then bounce off of it, right? What Jim did is he laid out a trading plan. This is what I want to see happen. Uh, Trader Will said fib and pivot and overnight highs all within 10 cents of each other. See, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, and I don't, that's the wrong way of saying it. It's not what I'm looking for. It's what I'm looking for you to do. When you analyze a position, what do you see? If you're using Fibonacci's, know where the Fib levels are. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you're using moving averages, know what those levels are. If you're using whatever it is, pivots, it doesn't matter. Bollinger's, know where they are. Know the importance to that position. And then and only then do you want to go ahead and make a decision on placing that trade. That's the difference of an amateur and a professional. Professional just knows. They know what they're doing when they get in. They know what they're doing to manage, what to do to get out. Where the amateur kind of puts the trade on and goes, what did I just do? Now what? You see, stuttering, stuttering Bob or whatever, right? Make sure you know your trading plan before you hit enter. And just sticking to the airlines, I know 
where the exit is before I get on that plane. When I walk in that front door of that plane, before I sit down, I know where every exit on that plane is, and I know where I'm running if there's a problem and I need to get off of that plane, which usually is not the front of the plane for me. Why? Everybody wants to get off the front. Uh huh. Plane doesn't hit a mountain from the back, it hits from the front, right? I'm going to the back. Uh, let's see. Jim said, Delta, uh, next step is how far do you want uh, to look at the option expiration date, swing trade, day trade? Exactly. Swing trade, I normally look at three to four weeks. Day trade, I'm looking for the shortest possible option I can do. That is my biggest reasoning behind trading a, an SPY option as often as I do is because I have options that expire three days a week. But do I know where all the wheels are on the plane? Um, well, Robert, I knew where the wheel was. I saw it fly off the plane that I was on. So I knew exactly where it was. Right? If you go to Spider, SPY, long option chain. So look, we've got options that expire on the 14th, the 16th, and the 18th. 2135, 283002. Every two days, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, is an options expiration. Best seat on a plane, well, best seat on a plane is first class if you're looking for comfort, right? Or um, business class is even better than that uh, on Delta anyway. But the safest seat on the plane is towards the back of the plane. It also gets you on first, which means your bags will make it. All right, cool. All right, give me some stocks, little guy. We've got a, just a handful of minutes. Give me one each only, please. QQQ, Brenda said. <clears throat> all right <clears throat> so where are we we're in a neutral bias right now 267 half is the first oh no we've got a fibbit in there oh we definitely need a new fib in here definitely need a new fib that puppy is long gone I mean, heck, that's from April. <laughs> All right. So look, here, here's the problem. Watch. This is an ideal place to draw the fib from. We have already violated. Let's see if we did it on the close. We violated the 882. We did not close below the 882, so we're good. But we're in shaky ground right now. So 274 is support, 279 half render is resistance. Micron, guys, try, type in your symbols. <clears throat> uh, let's see, MU, who was that? Uh, Trip, all right, got it. So let's see, this FIB, we closed above the 882, so in an ideal world, we really wanna have a new FIB drawn in there. Uh, I mean, we've got that move down, certainly not as big, but still a valid locale. What happened today, Trip? What what was Micron's news? Any idea? Now, Jim, you see the yellow line? You see where the E is? That says don't take a directional trade, no swing trade. All right, so 48 quarter, 49 uh, half, three quarter. Uh, is going to be resistance trip. 48, 48 quarter is support. Uh, 4681, 823. Yeah, a little tighter than what we had here, but we got it's a more valid, more of a valid fit. Um, not yet. Okay, trip. That's fine. So the um, General Motors, what's the big news on GM? What's happening on GM lately? <clears throat> Any takers? So Trader Will typed in about, he grabbed a story on Micron. Uh, shares of memory make a Micron are up strong. Uh, Mid-morning today around 10, da, da, da. if you own shares of the stock, uh, you can thank Goldman Sachs for that. This morning, Goldman upgraded shares of Micron to a buy and assigned a $49 stock, uh, the $49 stock to $58 a share as reports. Nice, okay. So they went from 45 to 49 to 58 as far as the target goes. Right. So the big news recently with GM is uh, with Nicola, right? 
Nikola, basically a couple of college kids came up together and said, hey, let's design cars. We just don't want to make them. They made a deal with GM to make the cars for them. And then what happened to uh, GM there? What was the news that drove GM the way that it did? Right. One major shorter out there came out and said, oh, it's all a, it's all a bunch of lies. It's a fake. It's this. It's that. Drove the price down. Today, we're finally starting to get a little bit of traction back again. But um, I think this is a this is a new wave, folks. I never thought of a car manufacturer that didn't manufacture cars. I'm looking at it as you got to make your own cars. And they're looking at it saying, why? Why do I have to make them? Why can't I get someone else to do it? Beautiful. And now does GM start selling the, the, the Nikola car as well since they own 11% of the company now? Probably. It would make sense. Um, so Microsoft is a no, Joan, on TikTok. But uh, Oracle is a yes. And there was one guy on that's uh, a Trump hater saying that the federal government is interfering and sticking their nose where it doesn't belong and we're really not fixing anything. Well, the concern is data. We're keeping the data in the US. The, the proprietary, uh, the IP is still in China. They're not giving that up and that's okay as long as the data stays here and they can't get access to the data, then it's, then it's fine. Um, it's just, it's interesting to watch some of these clowns talk, right? Um, okay, let's go and take a look at uh, Starbucks Robert was asking for. All right, nice little bounce there, Robert, off of the eight, which basically uh, acts as a fibbit as well. If you look where my horizontal line is, that's a fibbit between the, so it's basically the 82. Um, and we need to redraw for sure on Starbucks. This is since our last get together, they had a, a higher run up. Um, yeah, we'll go off of down here. Much smaller fib set. Nope, I missed it. Yeah, a little tighter than I like it to be. Even including this doesn't help much. Um, I'm going to leave the fibs that we had on there for now. It's just not enough there yet. Let's see if we go back and look historically. So we'll work off of this fib. So we're looking at 90 and a half, Robert, and then 93 and three quarters as the two upside targets. But I do like the bounce in the low cal of where it is right now. <clears throat> That's for sure. Hope that helps. Uh, Cisco, Charles was asking for. CSCO. Not the one with the S, not the food company, the tech company. Oh! Gappity gap to the downside and then just falling apart ever since. Uh, I don't really have a good place to draw a fib here. Let's see if we look further back. Very, very, very choppy. And no matter what I do, Unless I drew a very big fib, we've already violated it. So nothing that I'm really interested in here. I'd be careful unless you're trying to short it, uh, you know, play the downside on Cisco. And at that point, I'd be looking for horizontal support and resistances. So right around 38 quarter and probably around 33, three quarter, 34 is the next downside target. You're quite welcome, Robert. Uh, let's see. Hope that helped there. Sean, uh, RGA. So RGA Reassurance Group, uh, I've got no fibs drawn on it, but I see resistance right up in here. So right about that 106 half level. So we're not that far away. Be careful, use the eight as support. PK is asking for Walmart. Wally World. That's where the TV we ordered came from. Good price, good TV, good LG TV, but not when it's folded in half. Unless there's a new style that you can fold your TVs in half. I'd love it. But So we are still in a neutral bias at this point. I need to get above the eight with the 144 target then BK on the upside. For the, if you're doing downside here, I don't have enough room to my fib line. So no clear and concise entry there. 
Yeah, like the Samsung phones. Exactly, Trip, where they fold them in half now. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. All right, so there's a lot of stuff on GM and Nicola. Um, so I think Joan was also asking to look at Microsoft with the announcement. So Microsoft has been down just like everybody else. Uh, I think it would have been a good a good entry there, right? Um, listen, I, I understand that there is uh, deals under the table all the time with federal officials, government officials, uh, with private industry. Happens all the time. You, you can dispute it all you want. You won't get me to believe it's otherwise. But the thought that the president of the United States is banning TikTok so Oracle could buy it is nuts, in my opinion, right? Anybody else could offer it. TikTok's not going to take a little price because the president wants his friend to get it, right? There's no way. If, if you do not believe security with China of your information is a problem, then we have a problem. Uh, there are serious concerns on, uh, on that. So... Uh, let's see. Good to know. Um, Jim said Cisco's earnings are on August. Uh, oh, on August 12th was what missed. Okay. Got it. Um, NKLA, uh, who typed it in? Deborah said, as we speak, uh, Nicola is coming back very strong. Right. So good bounce today right very good bounce today um not to the point where i'd want to trade it but they're still suffering from that announcement of the the shorters trying to push it down anytime you see a guy like george soros out there bad mouthing a company he usually has a position in it and he's saying they're horrible they're terrible they're this they're that they're garbage blah, 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 blah. right for themselves for their own purpose um so amos said do we need a new does walmart need a new fib let's see so we violated the negative 618 we definitely could come off of this uh this new move here amos good catch Right, so we still want to get above the eight before taking the trade, which basically has to put me above 140 and a half to take it at all. Um, yeah, so Deborah said, update your charts, it's already over yesterday. Yeah, these are 15 minute delay here, so let's do this. All right, so there's there's today's chart. Right, so gap never filled yesterday, open window. Those of you that are in the gap trading stats, you know what I'm talking about. We got that big open window there. So the resistance level we're looking at is at 37.60. Again, look left, if you find it, uh, to find where the importance is. What do you see on the chart that says, ooh, this is a, a, an area of contention, this is a concern, right? Right in here, you've got some bottoming pattern, which gives us another potential blue zone even in there. <clears throat> I think, you know, GM, Nicola, I think there's some potential there. Um, I have not looked, here, let's see. Uh, let's get back, are they optionable? Probably not. Well, they are. So I don't know why the option chain wasn't showing anything. So if we go out and look at buying a longer term option and we go buy the 68, holy mackerel. Yeah, they're nuts. I'm going to pay 33% of the stock price for a 120 days now, but let me show you, watch. Buy. Let's 
So let's change it to one contract so it's easy math. You're going to spend $10.30 on that position would be your cost to enter this trade. This would give you the right for somebody. Yeah, there's, it's just not worth it. Look at the risk, 35 to 38 and a half. There's just no way. It, it's way overvalued, way overvalued, way overvalued. There's only a 19% probability of being in the money. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's see. Deborah said, using weeklies for just, say, a day or two can work great. Very short term. Oh, Deborah, I'm not poo-pooing it. I agree. I agree. It's just the diagonal component of this was a uh, no. Mm, let's see. Looks like we've added the half strikes in there recently. Zero uh, open interest, zero open interest, big open interest on the whole numbers. So yeah, you've got, actually, if we go look at 30 strike prices here, you have a lot of strikes in there. One, two, three, four, that fit the criteria, right? And bid ask spread, not bad at all. 20, 30, 40 cents, uh, I like it a lot. Um, let's see. Excellent. Excellent. Let me take this off. Now, if you go to the other side, you look at GM. I do not need all those strike prices. Uh, Brenda, you send everything to support at wealthbuildershq.com. Let's see. So let's go ahead and find an option that would fit for the sell. Go we'll find a buy. Go to the mid price, we go to one. Got $507 to enter this trade or 507 to enter the trade. We've got four dollars of difference in there. So if we were exercised, we'd be under water a dollar, dollar seven. So it's not horrible, right? That would be the trade setup right there. Buy to open one September 32 call. Uh, I'm sorry, sell to open one September 32 call. Buy to open one January 21st, 2020, 28 dollar call. So four dollar bid ask difference. And we got a decent amount we could pick up from the natural to the mid too. So that works out. Uh, it's not one that's on my list for Covered Call Explorer this week. The announcement came out that I saw came out this morning um, on the, the shorter, I forget the name of the guy that's doing it, but for that shorter out there, whoever's doing the shorting, to be um, said, yeah, it's a sham. You're just making stuff up at this point, All right? But I'm a big fan, That's and that's why I am a, a SPY trader, is for that exact reason of what the options, what I can get away with on options there. Just absolutely blows me away. One, two, we've got two strike prices in there that work. I'm in at $1.81, $1.84 rather, and two, or two seventy. 70 75 and 86 delta. Everything I need right there. Look at how huge the open interest is. These options are barely around but a couple of days. All right? Take advantage a couple of weeks. Take advantage of it, folks. Great position. As is QQQ, also a good position. This is a fallback. Amelia uses this all the time. All right? Four days, 11 days, 16, 18, 25. Oh, we don't have every three days. Or two days, rather. No. We don't, we don't, okay? Excellent, excellent. So folks, how was it? Good class, was it helpful? Did you get some good stuff out of it? If I didn't get to your chart, didn't get to your question, I apologize, you could always send uh, uh, questions, not charts, questions to support at wealthbuildershq.com and we'll be happy to answer them. Folks, if you have an interest in having me hold you by the hand, and walk you through the process in our mastermind group.
group, nothing more than just to find out what it is and how it works. You want to either A, put your name in here, or B, send an email to support at wealthbuildershq.com. I am telling you this, do not wait until you see me advertise it. You're making a mistake. Do not wait. We got you, Tom. Absolutely. Um, don't do not miss out on this one. Um, I'm just, I'm forewarning you. That's all. So, and Amelia will explain a little bit of that when you guys talk. With that, ladies and gentlemen, you have a wonderful rest of your day. God bless. Stay focused on the quest to becoming a great trader. Keep crushing it. And remember, you're just one trade away. Take care, folks. I will see you all soon. And I'll leave the room open for a couple of minutes. Amelia's got the top three strategies and her email address up there that you can grab. And I'll talk to you soon.